In this video, we will see the torque equation of a switcher reluctance motor. Before discussing the torque equation of switcher reluctance motor, I will just give you a very brief overview on working principle of a switcher reluctance motor. Switcher reluctance motor works under the principle of variable reluctance. The magnetic flux have a tendency to flow through a lowest reluctance path. When the stator phase windings of the motor are energized in a sequence, then it will produce a rotating magnetic field. You can see the two pictures given at the right side here, which shows the magnetic flux path between the stator and rotor. So, whenever a stator winding is energized, it will produce a magnetic field and the rotor will tend to align to the stator so that the flux path will become or the reluctance path will become minimum. So, when the stator windings are energized in a sequence, consequently, automatically, the rotor will continuously rotate in order to maintain the lowest reluctance path. Let's move on to the torque equation. In switch reluctance motor, torque is produced by variable reluctance principle. In general, the mechanical power developed by a machine PM is given as 2 pi n t by 60, which can also be written as t into omega. Since omega equal to 2 pi n by 60. Therefore, torque T is equal to Pm by omega Newton meter. So, in order to obtain the torque equation, we need to find the mechanical power developed by the machine. So, the mechanical power developed by the machine can be obtained from the input power and the power due to variation in stored energy. So, it is expressed as input power minus power due to variation in stored energy. We will find one by one. First, we will find the input power, then we will find the power due to variation stored energy. Input power Input power P in is nothing but E dot I where E is the EMF and I is the current. According to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, EMF due to change in flux linkage can be represented as E is equal to minus D lambda by dt. The flux linkage lambda due to excitation of the winding is lambda is equal to L times I. We will just give numbering for equation for our convenience. I will call this as 1, this is equation 2 and this is equation 3. So, by substituting 3 in equation 2, what we will get? E is equal to minus D of Li by Tt. Right? By applying partial derivative, we can obtain minus of L into Di by Dt plus I into Dl by Dt. Let us say that this is equation number what we obtained is E is equal to minus of 
L into di by dt plus i into dl by dt. This is what we call as equation number 4. So multiply and divide the second term in equation 4 by d theta we will get e is equal to minus of l into di by dt plus i into dl by dt into d theta by d theta which can be further written as minus of l into di over dt plus i into dl over d theta times d theta by dt. As we already know that d theta by dt is nothing but omega. Therefore, the equation for E can be written as minus of L into di over dt plus i into dl over d theta times omega. While considering only the magnitude, we will take E is equal to L into di over d theta plus i times omega into dl by or dl over d theta. We will call this as equation number 5. The equation for input power is P is equal to E i. Therefore, we say this as L i into D i over D t plus i square omega into D l over D theta. This is the final equation for input power to the motor. Next one is power due to variation in stored energy. Energy stored in the inductor is represented by W e is equal to 1 by 2 L square. And the power due to variation in energy stored in the inductor is nothing but d times omega e by dt. So we can say d by dt into 1 by 2 li square which can be written as 1 over 2 into d li square by dt while applying partial differentiation for this given equation we will get 1 by 2 into 2 li when you differentiate i square we will get 2i and while taking l as constant we say it as 2 li di over dt plus i square into tl over dt. Here also we will multiply and divide the second term of this equation by d theta. We will get 1 over 2, 2 times L i d i over d t plus i square into d l over d t multiplied by d theta over d theta. Further, 
I will take this as Li into Di by sorry Di by Dt just cancelled one by two by two plus one by two i square into dl by d theta into d theta over dt as we have already seen that d theta by dt is equal to omega i will write li into di over dt plus i square over 2 into omega into dl by d theta so this is the final equation for power due to variation in stored energy now we have obtained the equation for input power and the power due to variation in stored energy in the inductor. The mechanical power developed is obtained by using the equation input power minus power due to variation in stored energy. These are the equations we derived for the input power and power due to variation in stored energy. We will substitute these equations here. Li into di over dt plus i square omega into dl by d theta minus li into di by dt plus i square by 2 into omega dl by d theta, d theta. so we can straight away cancel li into di by dt from this equation and we get i square omega dl over d theta minus 1 by 2 i square omega dl over d theta and the final equation for mechanical power pm is equal to 1 by 2 i square omega dl by d theta The equation for torque is T is equal to Pm by omega and while substituting this we get 1 by 2 I square into dl by d theta as the final equation for torque. If you go back to number these equations this is equation number 7 and we can call this as equation number 8 this is equation number 9 this is equation number 10 and your final equation is equation number 11 thank you for watching this video i hope this video is helpful if you have any comments, please post your comments in the comment box. Thank you once again.